Hello, Achim Yekarim. How are you? Baruch Hashem, we had a great shiur early today talking about Parashat Chukat, but also several other issues. This week's Parashat Chukat is connected to last week's shiur uh, of uh, last week's parasha, Parashat Koach, where in last week's parasha we uh, heard the horrendous situation that happened with Korach, where despite being righteous all of his life, despite being very, very wealthy, despite being from a great family, he steered wrong and led himself, his family, with the exception of his kids who did tshuva in the last minute, his wife, as well as the other 250 leaders of uh, Am Yisrael, straight into Sheol, straight into Gehenom. From what? From going against Moshe, going against Aaron, which of course, if you do that, you're going against God. And this parasha is, par- is connected to Parashat Chukat, which the beginning of the parasha starts with the one particular mitzvah, the King Solomon, the wisest man of all time, says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23, I said I would be wise, but it is far from me. King Solomon said that this, this mitzvah of the red heifer, the red cow, is something that's beyond my wisdom. I don't understand it. So Chazal asks, why is it that this parasha is connected to that one? I mean, usually the parashot, usually the uh, weekly Torah portions are relevant to each other. It's either a continuation of an existing story, or it's just each one is a connecting uh, with a mitzvah. There's always some type of connection. So how is the story of Korach, you know, and, and his wickedness, connected to a mitzvah that no one understands? So here Chazal is explaining to us something very, very important. Why did Korach fail? Korach failed because he started to use his own logic in replacement of Hashem's logic, in replacement of divine logic. When he saw that Moshe and Aaron became the leaders of Am Yisrael, because Hashem chose them, he didn't like it too much. He said, listen, how could it be? especially being influenced by his, by his wife, saying, how could it be? We come from the same family. We're both from the Levi tribe. I'm richer than them. I'm also wise. I also know Torah. Why would they be leaders and not me, especially Aaron? Aaron, okay, Moshe, let's say Hashem chose him. Okay, let's say we can give that an excuse in his mind. He says, let's say we can give them an excuse. But why, why Aaron? Is it uh, possible that maybe Hashem really didn't choose him? And things didn't fit right in his brain because it didn't make sense to him. So then he started asking questions. He said, wait a minute, Moshe Rabbeinu, you said that we have a mitzvah according to what you say. It's it's, it's in the Torah, it's from Hashem. You say that we have a mitzvah of putting a mezuzah on. Putting a mezuzah on. But what if I have a house full of sifre Torah, full of the scrolls of Torah from... Top to bottom, or bottom to top. I have an Eiffel Tower, or a, better said, a, uh, a uh, Sears Tower, full of Sifre Torah. Do I still have to have a mezuzah on the door? And Moshe says, yes, there's, there are two different mitzvot. He says, yeah, but it doesn't make sense, because the uh, Sefer Torah has to over 304,800 letters, it's full of Torah, and I'm having thousands and thousands of Sifre Torah. And a mezuzah, what does it have? It has a couple of paragraphs from the Torah. Why would I need these couple of paragraphs if I have thousands of them? It doesn't make any sense. And this human logic failed him and led him all the way to Gehenom. Not understanding the mitzvah can sometimes get us to a point where if we don't have the right foundation, get us to a point of completely destroying our soul. And this is exactly why Chazal says the parashat chukat, which means this is the decree, or decree, is connected. Because this parasha says, Zot chukat Torah. This is the decree of the Torah. But chukat also comes from the word chakuk. Chakuk means engraved. 
So Hashem is telling us about this wonderful mitzvah of the red cow, the red heifer, that we don't understand really how it works because the whole point of the red heifer, the red cow, is to purify the nation if somebody touched a, a dead body or became impurified in one way or another. They use the red heifer in order to purify them. After slaughtering the, uh, the cow, they would add a few other ingredients to it and then they would use this to purify the nation. Anyone that became impure can become pure with this, uh, with this red heifer. But the illogical part, the part that we don't understand with human logic, better said, is that the one that's actually going to, that's preparing this, whether it's the slaughterer, or it's the Kohen that sprinkles the blood, or it's the one that actually sprinkles the water of, uh, you know, after they mix it in, they, uh, they all become contaminated. So how could the one that's helping people become pure becoming contaminated himself? This doesn't make sense. This is exactly what King Solomon says. But this is why Hashem said, Zot chukata Torah. This Torah is engraved in you. Meaning that whether you understand it or not is irrelevant. You just have lowly human logic. I have divine logic. And my divine logic is not like writing on a wall that you could erase. My divine logic is engraved. When something is written on the wall, you could easily erase it. Whereas when something is engraved, it becomes part of what it's engraved in. And that's one of the things we have to understand when it comes to Torah. If we don't understand something, according to the Gemara and according to the sages... If something is beyond our logic, it has nothing to do with the mitzvah. Meaning, there's no flaw in the mitzvah. There's chash v'shalom, no flaw in Hashem's logic. The flaw is within us. And that's one of the things that people have a hard time understanding. The key here is that first we must do, and then we can start asking questions. The reason why I thought about this is because tonight... Baruch Hashem, we had a great shiur, but during the shiur, as you know, we have our uh, posts, our um, shiurim posted on YouTube, and one of these wicked, wicked people, who goes by the name of Jorge Rodriguez, I'm sure it's a fake name, decided that, you know, he watched The Wasting Seed, a very, very popular and very, very moving and very strong shiur that we made, Baruch Hashem, in New York, called Wasting Seed, Pgama Brit. And he decided that he didn't like what he heard, so he decided to write a bunch of comments threatening my life and threatening my family's life. And he wrote all these wonderful things about how he's going to do this and he's going to do that. And the reality of it is that aside from it being disturbing and aside from you know me knowing that Obviously, the one who decides who lives and the one who decides who succeeds or the opposite is only in the hands of Hashem and definitely not in the hands of some moron that is sitting in front of his computer feeling strong because no one's next to him. The reality of it is that I know the truth. But I'm thinking to myself, why would somebody take their time, watch the shoe, and if you like it, you like it, great. Maybe it helps you do tshuva. If you don't like it, then okay. Then you just press, you know, a different button and move to a different shoe or move to a different video. Do something else with your life. Why go out of your way to make awful comments threatening my life, threatening my family? Why would you do something like this? And this is exactly where this parasha comes in. When we think like Korach, and that things are supposed to make sense to us, and if they don't make sense to us, then everyone else has to be wrong, and it's not us. Then of course you're going to make comments like this. Of course you're going to say stupidity and foolishness like this. But when we realize what Hashem actually did write in the Torah, and you see that this Torah does not change, that's why we all need to understand there's no such thing as modernizing the Torah. There's no such thing as changing the Torah in any way, shape, or form. Whatever we got from Mount Sinai is what we follow today. Whatever is applicable. 
obviously we cannot do the mitzvot of the Bet HaMikdash because we don't have the Bet HaMikdash, unfortunately. This does not make those mitzvot not valid. What it makes them is that they're put on hold. Bezat Hashem, when Hashem brings us the third Bet HaMikdash, those mitzvot become applicable immediately. The Kohanim has to be pure, have to become purified. We have to get a red cow, which Baruch Hashem, there's two of them in the world now. Everything becomes applicable immediately. The same thing goes with Shabbat. If someone has a life danger, then Shabbat is put on hold. It's not canceled. It's put on hold. We obviously, all Jews must keep Shabbat. Not allowed to drive, not allowed to play with your phone, not allowed to play with money, not even allowed to talk about business. But, chas v'shalom, if there's life danger, it's actually a mitzvah to take that person, drive them to the hospital, or do whatever is necessary to get them out of life danger. But this does not mean that the Shabbat is canceled, chas v'shalom. What it means is the Shabbat is put on hold until there's no longer danger, which means that as soon as someone, if someone took somebody else to the hospital, as soon as they arrive to the hospital and the danger is gone, the danger stopped, you know, the, uh, the doctor has picked up the patient and they're taking care of him, immediately Shabbat gets turned back on, which means that you can't even turn off the car. You can't go back home. You can't play with your phone and call the family and tell them, listen, everything's okay. You get there, you get them out of danger, and then Shabbat is no longer on hold. It goes right back in. So the sages ask, why do this? Why do you allow Shabbat to be put on hold? Isn't Shabbat the most important mitzvah? Yes, it is. But the sages explain, we only do this not because life is more important than Shabbat, but rather because the Shabbat is more important even than life. How do we know? The only reason we're putting Shabbat on hold is so the life can be saved and the person and their, their neshama, their soul, can keep many more Shabbats due to putting the Shabbat on hold. And this is one of the things that to some people, this is 100% logical, makes a lot of sense because they've made the Torah chakuk, they made the Torah an engravement in their soul, an engravement in their heart. Whereas the people that say, no, this doesn't make any sense. How could this be? Life is much more important. Well, then you have to ask yourself, am I Korach or am I Moses? Of course we know that the fool that made those foolish comments because he didn't like what the sages in the Torah writes about wasting seed, of course we know where he, which camp he's in. He's going to go, and unless he does tshuva, he's going to, have a VIP session and an eternal session in the same place that Koach finds himself till this day. But hopefully he does tshuva. Hopefully he listens to this specific shiur. Why? Because you realize these laws that we talk about in the shiurim have nothing to do with me. Have nothing to do with me. This is not my opinion. I provide zero opinion. Especially in this shiur. Anytime I provide my opinion, I let people know it's my opinion. The reality of it is that we must all realize when Hashem said that these are the laws and these laws are engraved, what He's telling you is that whether you understand it or not, they're permanent, they're eternal, and whether you like it or not, you must follow it. Those who follow get reward. Those who don't, unfortunately for them, get punishment. This is one of the 13 principles of faith the Rambam told us that we must repeat every day at the end of Shachrit, or usually that's the uh, culture to repeat at the end of the morning prayer. It's 13 principles of faith, and one of them, one key one that everyone must believe and follow, is that the righteous get rewarded and the wicked get punished. There's no such thing as a get-out-of-jail-free card once this particular mission in this life, once this life is over, you can't show up to Shamaim. And said, no, 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 I wasn't ready. This is not child's play. This is not kids' games. So we have to understand. We always have to tell people the truth based on what Hashem told us in Mount Sinai. Based on what He told the sages. Based on what's written. Based on what's known. With zero sugarcoating. Why? Because the key is for us to know. And at least we can make the right decisions. And start figuring out a way of what we need to do to change in ourselves 
in order to make the Torah engraved in our hearts. Chazakim Abuchim, may Hashem continue to bless you, and Bezat Hashem will talk soon. Hold tuf.